Welcome back to Political Paradigm. My next guest is a very young uh, politician. He's a new politician, I like to call him that. He is a member-elect, Kaduna North Federal Constituency for the 10th House of Representatives. Uh, he's Bello Erufai. Welcome to Political Paradigm. Thank you very much, Terry. Uh, Good to see you. I'm sure everybody now knows who you are. Yes, <laughs> so For, let me be, fortunately and unfortunately. Let me begin by congratulating you. At 32, you are, you're 32, right? 35. 35? You look very small. Oh, wow. I'm 35. <laughs> <laughs> you're one of the youngest in the house of yes, representatives. Yes. And uh, I'd like to think that uh, you're prepared for this position. So tell us how you're prepared for this position. Uh, well, once again, thank you so much for having me. It's truly an honor to um, be here with you. Uh, we go way back in the Senate, the amazing work you did. Um, I'd, you can't fully prepare for the task at hand. It's monumental. But um, my educational background, I think, prepared me well for this. I studied political science uh, in university uh, with a minor in international relations, religious studies. And for my postgraduate studies, I went to Georgetown, where I studied public relations and corporate communications. Essentially, the art of lobbying public affairs all falls into that. And of course, as you know, I had the distinct honor of working under Senator Obasan Aman, both you and I, in, the, um, in this current Ninth Senate, in fact, as a senior legislative aide and chief of staff. So I believe that has provided me with some ample experience to know what the art of lawmaking and representation entails. But I'm still uh, prepared to learn more. Um, it is a major jump, I know, and a huge responsibility that I do not take lightly. So you go from legislative aid to a member House of Representatives. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm I have to ask you this question. How influential was your father all right, in your decision to join politics and your emergence as the member representing Kaduna North Federal Constituency? Um, look, um, we were, as our father's children, uh, were taught to be obedient, not labor parties were obedient, but obedient in the sense of it, and independent as well. We've never been pressured to study engineering, medicine, or any of that. And I think my father early on realized my interest in politics. I'm obsessed with history, philosophy, and politics. I've always leaned towards the arts, not the sciences, as Nigeria tends to divide um, um, those courses um, in that regard. Um, it's also, there's evidence to prove to that. In my father's autobiography, The Accidental Public Servant, he does mention that I've always been interested in politics. Uh, regarding my election, absolutely not. I know it's hard to believe um, because people think um, when you're here in this studio or when you're a politician, you won't say the truth or you, but absolutely not. I think my father was actually against my running he has always had a distaste for dynasties and succession. But it wasn't within his control. I think Senator Obasani, the governor of Kaduna State right now, uh, played the most instrumental role. You know, if we had time, I'll tell you the story. But I think Obasani was the man, His Excellency Senator Obasani was the man that convinced my father, I think in a trip in Dubai, that he is going to... Uh, ask me to run. And he has been on that path. The chairman of the local government uh, is incidentally a childhood friend of mine. And it was also Governor Obasani that promoted him. So it's all in line with the El Rafa administration's policy of ensuring young people are not just um, holding um, credible and critical agencies, but also going down and dirty and joining grassroots politics, you know, and, and, um, um, I think it was only two weeks ago that my father said this to the stakeholders we met, that he didn't campaign for me once. He never spoke in my name. Perhaps because maybe... How well, did you fund your campaign? No, absolutely not. How did you fund your campaign? Um, look, um, um, Governor Obasani played a role. Um, and I'm not ashamed to say, I think I, uh, there are many projects I've started even before being sworn in because I want my constituents to know it's a different time now. They could trust me, we could be honest. I'll tell them what I can do and what I can do. But uh, Terry, you worked with, we worked together in the Senate. You know, the, the, there are positives and negatives of being Governor El Rufai's son, former Governor El Rufai's son. Uh, one of them, one of the positives is 
There are a lot of people. You just heard um, my elder brother that left uh, Honorable Abejide, who did a great job. I probably shouldn't be saying this online, but joining ADC and keeping uh, holding his position, say that my father is his friend. So how difficult do you think it is for me to call um, esteemed individuals like him and ask for funding? Do you understand? But people don't see it from that perspective. They think, you know, but even my father's enemies know that he doesn't delve into the treasury. That's just not him. You know, he's never been that person. And then my boss has money, as you know. <laughs> you know, so we'll, there's we'll, that. We'll go yeah. into no the problem. house of the 10th house, but yeah. it's good to set a background to who you are yeah. so that people understand. Uh, one of those would have to be the distinct difference between Belo El Rufai, mm -hmm. a 10th House of Reps member elect, mm -hmm. and Belo El Rufai, son of gov former governor yeah. El Rufai. And yeah. I think that to a great extent, even you may have the concern as to carving a niche for yourself Absolutely. with regards Absolutely. to getting people to understand that this is who you are. Yeah. Well, that's a great insight, uh, Terry. And that's why I've always liked you. I am not uh, my father. I'd, I would never... Um, he is everything to me. I think he's an astute public administrator. I think every office he has held, you might not like his style, but you can't uh, discard his competence and ability to carry out difficult tasks, be it in BP, FCT, or governor of Kaduna. But I'm not that person. You know, um, I joke with him sometimes that I'm more willing to compromise, to reach across the aisle, to bend a bit. My father's very understanding, but when he takes his position on certain issues, um, chief of which is the subsidy position, he's um, totally been for it, uh, for its removal without any position. You know, I, I, I on the other hand, uh, might come off as more cautious, I guess. You know, but um, I'm not him, you know, and I think part of the problem, I've faced that, I've had a lot of scuffles online because of that, you know. Um, um, I think before now, and I was a private citizen, so any policy that has to do with Kaduna, for example, should not be tagged to me. I'm not a government official. My father became governor of Kaduna and sent me on exile after all the campaign. I had to go work with Huawei, the Chinese company. So I don't like being boxed as a son of a big man. I was never in Kaduna uh, getting involved in contracts or policy. We did use our position to, to lobby for young people to rise up in Kaduna, and I'm proud to do that. I'm proud we did that as a collective. You know, but I'm glad you mentioned that very early on, it's quite important that I chart my path. I believe I've started doing that. I believe unconsciously the reason why my father didn't campaign for me was to see if I could handle it. In fact, the only advice he gave me was go and look for voters. You know, there's a lot of credit to the Buhari administration for the Electoral Act. And I think Bivas is a game changer. There were problems in this recent election, but you can see now that every um, elected official either has to work or work twice or work thrice or go to his people. You know, the game is changing. You know, the era of ballot stuffing and stuff. So I actually ran um, a very difficult campaign because my assignment was double. So when people speak about governor's son, and it is easier to get funding, absolutely. Absolutely. There are a lot of, um, I know my background. I'll never sit and say I'm from a humble background. That, that would be insulting to people, you know, but I'm not either taking handouts as well. But um, I think it's important to, to, to also uh, let Nigerians know, my constituents know that, that there is no place I didn't go while oh, campaigning. The task, uh, <laughs> the task is before you now. But yeah. you, you talk about um, certain stands you take and your father is also that kind of man who is quite hard on his stance and is unapologetic about it, you're pretty blunt yourself as well. And uh, I've seen your takes on Twitter on certain national issues and issues relating to Kaduna State. Yeah. And many people may not like your approach to certain things. Will that change? I mean, now you're, you occupy public office. Yeah. Would you change your approach, perhaps your manner of approach to certain issues now oh, that yeah. you occupy public Yeah, yeah, but I've certainly changed. Office. I, I think a lot of people still confuse me for my younger brother. I have a younger <laughs> brother that's still firing. I, I, I know yesterday my wife just shared a post with me and someone was <laughs> asking me a question and I said, when did I say that? Apparently, it's my younger brother, Bashir. Bashir. You know, I hope he tones down, but he will also follow his path and make his mistakes. 
and corrections but i don't i don't engage anymore on social media i also think people have left me alone which was always the point but now and i'm taking an oath i'm not only serving the good people of kaduna north i'm a national lawmaker so every nigerian including you terry will hold you accountable precisely Absolutely. so things change you know and i think you know people are also um, in this era of um, cancellation and social media and fake news people always forget the compassionate side of all of us we are human people make mistakes is what you do to correct that is what you do to um, become a better person every day and give people chances ask for explanations and you know communicate better i think going around the campaign and seeing the exact state that nigeria is has really given me a different perspective there, there are real battles to fight and they are not on twitter or instagram or TikTok. Absolutely. Those are the fights I intend to focus on. Let's, let's go to the House of Representatives now, the 10th House. Yeah. Uh, you're coming at a time when the APC is struggling with its majority status. Yeah. I don't know if it's a concern for you, considering the fact that it's not clear in what direction this would swing, considering the two factions of the APC. What factions? The House of Representatives. Or oh, the candidates. Uh, the, 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 the multiple candidates, candidates absolutely, running. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, well, well the, but the party has made its position clear, right? But every candidate is entitled to run if he fits the rules of the House. I don't. I'm a first-timer. You know, but and as my elder brother said previously, I think all the candidates are of impeccable character. We don't know much about them. And personally, you know, um, even on the way my team and I were going through notes, on the way and they're telling me don't say much don't get in trouble but i think as leaders we owe it to the public and the fourth estate to be as honest as possible um there's something my father told me a while ago that i'll never forget and i think he said this while i was with uh while my boss senator obasani was still in a legislator not a governor he said he believes that every president is entitled to choose or, ex or, or show his preference for a speaker or a Senate president because the governors do the same. Every governor more or less determines or lobbies as to who he decides to work with. So I think um, based on the party line and that, uh, I think um, Ashua Ju is within his right to say, oh, this is the man I want, you know. Um, I wouldn't get into zoning. You are, you've interviewed my father, you knew him before me. I have a problem with zoning, but I know it's part of um, our political dynamics, you know, but I think um, as we micro, micro zone, we could get into serious trouble, you know, and, and stuff. But I, I, I don't see it as a major problem. Uh, absolutely, mm -hmm. especially for a lawmaker, like a first-time lawmaker yeah. like yourself, who's more interested in governance aspects yeah, yeah, I don't of really. things. I, I spoke with um, an outgoing lawmaker, Honorable Onofio Kluke, yeah. He is a, for he's a first timer. He yeah. wouldn't be in the next assembly. He was very blunt. And he said to me that the choice of um Femi Gwajabiamile at the time was easy for him because he had gone through the antecedents of Femi Gwajabiamile. Yeah. And he was approached. So he could easily make that decision. I don't yeah. know if you have this you have similar experience. But you understand the pedigree yeah. of the candidates. Yeah. While you say you want to go with the party's choice, do you understand the pedigree of this man? And what sort of engagement have you had with him that's informed your decision? Honorable Taji De Abbas is from my state. Absolutely. Uh, he's from Zaria, which incidentally is where my family is from. He's a gentleman. He's a fourth-time lawmaker, I believe. He's aptly experienced. He has the composure. You know, he's level-headed. He doesn't make the noise. You know, I, you know I, Terry, Nigerians like noise. You know, sometimes there are people that achieve a lot with noise, but there are people that do it silently. He's certainly qualified to be speaker. So if it's about his antecedents, and I'm even the wrong person to ask because I'm very biased being from my state, you know. But as I said, I think so are all the other uh, candidates. I think um, it's, the House is a delicate place. What was the numbers now? The APC has 162, PDP has 102, the Labour Party has... 34 members. 35, yeah. I think um, my father uh, and the leader of NMPP, Kwankwaso, has about 18 on the ground. ADC has two, including one on the left. And I think has two, yeah, SDP two, has, two, has two, two as well. well. 325, there's still some 
seats that are up for no, they're just one seat uh, for by-election right? seat i think taraba state okay every other you know so uh, you made a great point that the numbers are a bit tight while apc has the majority you have to reach out across the aisle you know but here's what i'll say regarding my position on this i believe um there are three th three arms of government and there's an impression that this ninth, ninth assembly that my boss walked in was a rubber stamp this is the assembly the national assembly that passed the petroleum industry act a substantial bill this is the um, national assembly that passed the banking and other you know about the bofia act you work closely with Santo basani allowing um you know um Nigerians that are not no, within I the banking community. With Senator Obasani. Yeah, but you, I you, covered him. You covered him. As you did. Who was at but, a but, but even though you give us a tough time, you always <laughs> presented what the efforts we made, not the mistakes were not made. But I think you are one of the most uh, fair and, and open journalists. I'm just saying the notion that the legislature must fight the executive is is very ignorant. They are meant to work together and check each other. You know. So I, I you know. Um, if I assure you and the party feel this is the legislature, the thing that could promote their legislative agenda, then, then so be it. But who know? says, who says that it <laughs> is, there can only be a good working relationship between the executive and legislature if the ex executive or the president decides on who becomes a leader? That's a good question. Who says that I that's the, the only answer to way that. that's a good that question. that can happen? You know, but, but for me, as I said, all the candidates are ours. But you know what, Terry, let me be a politician. I'm a first time. I'm just 35. Um, there are members, member elects that are reaching out to me, but they're doing that because they know I worked for Senator Obasani. They know the candidate for speaker is from Kaduna. They also know about my last name. But most times I just tell them, okay, we could form a pressure group, follow the lines, and work as a team. My point is, I am also new to this. And I'm a product of the American political system. I studied that. The people don't look at first-timers like us when they are doing this big man politics, you know? They, they don't have a seat on the plane for us when they are lobbying. And it's fine. That it's, the National Assembly is a very hierarchical um, place. You know, even your office, as you recall, my boss, despite chairing banking, had our office on the bottom floor, you remember, because he was a first-timer. So I, I tell new members to just leave it. Let's hope for the best Nigerians, the best minds across every aspect, the executive, the legislature, the judiciary, even the media. We need to unite and do what is right. I'm just waiting for the day to be sworn in. And in the meantime, I've focused on my constituency. I'm proud to say I've rolled out scholarships already before being sworn in. Uh, we've done a few health outreaches. These are the things I want to focus on. Uh, we're, we're almost out of time now, yeah. but I want to set a basis to your going to the National Assembly now and ask you a straightforward question. When you decided to go into politics, mm. did you outrightly decide to go to the House of Representatives and why? Um, yes, I did. Um, I analyzed my strengths and my weaknesses. I had a discussion with uh, a lot of my mentors, I'd say, of course, Governor Obasani is one. My father is one. Um, a very successful businessman, Alleji Idris Othman, is one. My father's elder brother, Bashir al Rufai, is one. Um, the man I owe my professional career to, uh, Hakim Bello Asagi, is one. And I think when they weighed the factors, they felt that is the skill, the art of compromise, reaching across the aisle, partnerships, networking, is what I'm good at. And having the background of serving with Senator Obasani, they thought it, it just uh, it was a fit. So I did think of it. I thought cautiously about what the steps I'm taking. I know the burden in front of me. I'm not doing this plan in four years, eight years ahead. I think we should dead that. I don't know if I'll be alive till then. But I've also enjoyed one part. You know, there were fears that when I start campaigning, and my father expressed that, that even though PDP won in Kaduna, uh, um, former Vice President Atiku Abakar won in Kaduna, he takes some joy that the people of Kaduna North did not reject his son because that would have been an indictment on him. So I went around. So th there's some hope that people have in me that I do not intend to let down. And I've designed my team already. We have about 10 bills waiting. Your Aziz came here with me, he's uh, my SLE, so we're prepared to go. I was going to come to that. Yeah. I, I know you cannot tell me that the 
all the bills, but I would like to get your thinking Absolutely. as to the sort of reforms that Absolutely. you're hoping to bring in. Absolutely. Well, well, as I said earlier, I'm a national lawmaker. We've, my, my team and I have stratified laws into three. They're national, regional, and state laws, local laws. Um, for me, national law has to rely on the most pertinent issue right now, insecurity. And I'm an advocate and proponent of state police. I've never hidden that. I think and I hope President Bola Ahmed Tinubu will revisit the issue of state police. We already have um, the framework set up. Um, it was just the constitutional amendment process got it voted out when these amendments were made in the Buhari administration. You know, the amendments that brought power back to the uh, concurrent list, you know, railways back to the concurrent list. We are hoping state police, police will happen. And we have a great framework where there will be a central policing system, an FBI, if you have it or not. I know the fear is that governors will abuse uh, police officers. I assume governors are not already in control of police officers. Bella, so I'm glad you asked that. State police is one, and we'll discuss more when we have time. Bella, I'd like to thank you very much thank for your you time. So we clearly have a lot to talk about, but I'll let you get into the house first. Yeah, no problem. Thank you I'm very looking much. Forward to, thank you for, for your me. time. So I've been you. speaking with uh, Bello El Rufai. He is a member elect of the 10th House of Representatives. He represents uh, Kaduna North Federal Constituency in the House of Representatives. And for one last time, I'll say this. He is the son of former Governor uh, El, El, El Rufai, Nasir El Rufai of Kaduna State. He is hoping to carve a niche for himself. Well, that's political burdom. I'd like to thank you for your time as well, for tuning in. We're back next week, Tuesday at 12.30. PM. Remember to catch this and other episodes on YouTube. Simply go to YouTube and search Political Paradigm or go to channelstv.com. I'm Terry Ikumi. Goodbye.